This is the Silicdyne Fluctus, available now from wildmanrocketry.com. It's an all-in-one flight computer with an integrated GPS tracking system, three programmable pyro outputs, four programmable analog outputs, and two inputs for external sensors. It's sold as a package deal with this ground station called Steady. Before proceeding, any Fluctus owners or prospective buyers should download and read the user manual from the Silicdyne website, which we've linked in the description. While it might seem quite intimidating, we're here to make it just a little bit easier for you. First and foremost, do not mount your Fluctus flight computer to an electronic sled just yet. Upon your first startup, the Fluctus will need its accelerometer calibrated. So find a flat and non-metallic surface and connect a battery directly to it. The display on the rear will show you which side to set it on, and you'll need to stand it up on its edge while it calibrates the accelerometer. This will ensure you get proper acceleration readings whether you want them just for review or for programming outputs. Now, wiring the Fluctus is a bit different from most altimeters. The pyro outputs have a shared positive terminal and for the sake of this video I've used an orange and yellow wire assembly to demonstrate how you'll need to wire it up. Both of your pyro outputs will have one shared lead in the positive terminal while the opposing side will go to the respective output terminal. You can connect your pyrotechnic charges directly to the computer this way or use terminal blocks as shown. Just make sure you trim your wire leads to eliminate the chance of a short during ascent. There is a wiring diagram available both on the screen right now and in the user manual. Now it's on to the more complex part, programming the Fluctus. The first thing you'll want to do is download the Fluctus Control Center software or FCC for short. Again, that link is in the description. You'll need to perform a firmware update for both the steady ground station and the altimeter before proceeding. Connecting your Fluctus to the PC can be a little bit convoluted, so first open the Fluctus Control Center or FCC and load the comms menu in the corner there and you'll see what USB ports you currently have. As you can see, I only have one. Once you know what ports are there and what aren't, plug your steady into a USB port and press the refresh USB COM ports button. After it finishes refreshing, you should see one new USB port appear. Click on that. Then we're gonna go up here to the firmware updater, drop the drop down menu and make sure you have selected steady FW. It may not say one underscore two, it will be the newest version available. This currently is, it might be 1.3 or 1.4 or whatever it is at the time that you're watching this video. Just make sure you have the one selected that says steady and not fluctus. Click update. You should see a bright white LED flash on your steady. Then it's gonna update your firmware. Once your firmware is updated, you'll notice that your steady did not turn back on. So what you're gonna wanna do is unplug it once again. And before plugging the steady back in, plug your Fluctus flight computer in and perform the same process, but make sure you select the Fluctus FW bin file from the drop-down menu. This way, both the steady ground station and the Fluctus flight computer are on the most up-to-date firmware. Now unplug your Fluctus flight computer and plug your steady ground station back into your PC. Power up your Fluctus flight computer and start the FCC software and look on the display on the back of the Fluctus to the far right and see what channel it's broadcasting its GPS signal. Now match the corresponding letter with the channel on the FCC software and click connect to ground station. Now that we've got all that fun stuff out of the way, we're going to go to the top and click config. Now we're going to add a new rule. In this drop down menu, you can see a myriad of options for when you would like this rule to take place. Now we're just going to assume that our first pyro output is going to be our drogue charge. So we're going to select when apogee and then we're going to select pyro output channel one. Now, there's a great option here where you can see it says instant. If you're flying the Fluctus as a backup altimeter, you can add a delay up to four seconds on your Apogee charge, though for an Apogee charge, I would advise no more than one second. And just like that, we have Pyro Channel 1 set up as an Apogee drogue deploy backup charge with a one second delay. Now, we're going to add another one and we can put during descent, this is going to be our main charge. So we're gonna do pyro output to instant and the variable we can change to altitude is less than, and we're gonna type in 100. Now it is worth remembering, of course, that 
this is reading in meters not feet that's pretty low so i'm actually going to go back and adjust this for 200 meters which is right around 820 feet it may look confusing but it is actually quite simple to use you just gotta really sit there and think about what you got going on the cool thing about how programmable this is is that you can program it to do pretty much anything you want let's say you're going to use the fluctus just for gps tracking and to air start something so what we can do here is we can do during ascent we can add the variable of a timer so we have our timer set and then we can change that value to greater than three seconds we'll say your motor burns out at two and a half seconds you want to light your air starts then what's great about this is then assuming that you're using it just for these you can select both pyro outputs one and two we'll get rid of these guys for a little clarity here as we talked about no recovery deployment the fluctus is just controlling the ignition of two air starts we have pyro output one and two now programmed to fire three seconds into ascent so it's going to start the timer as soon as the rocket starts ascending and let's say you want to make sure that that rocket is going to be flying straight up you can then add another value we'll open the drop down menu again and put max angle okay so then we can select max angle less than 15 degrees so if the rocket is more than 15 degrees off vertical then it will not light these motors and let's say it's going great and it finally realizes that it's at the right angle but it's going way too slow and lighting those motors could be a serious serious problem we can select vertical speed and ensure that it's greater than whatever variable we want that's up to you for your individual project. What I'm trying to convey here is that the Fluctus is highly programmable and it is very, very easy once you get into things. Thank you so much for tuning into this Wildman Rocketry video. If you're a Fluctus owner, we wish you a safe and straight flight. If you're not a Fluctus owner, well, what are you waiting for? The link is in the description. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and pay a visit to your favorite high-power rocketry vendor for the past 20 years, wildmanrocketry.com.